So last night I was on a coaching call and my son was in the other room uh, playing video games and he's not really listening um, to my calls, but uh, yesterday was a kind of heavy, it was a heavy call day. So I didn't have a lot of interaction with him while he was on his video games. And um, he came over and gave me several hugs while I was on my calls, um, but we didn't have a lot of one-on-one -on -one, uh, interaction at that point. And so he, from the other room, about 30 minutes into my call, uh, says, Mom, what are you yapping about? And I felt my body react like I think anyone who was raised by a millennial would, or not a millennial, but a, a, a boomer, <laughs> um, would react. And I have done a lot of work to really make sure that, um, that I don't react externally the same way that I react internally. Um, I am not perfect at it by any means, but, but it helped that I was on a coaching call. We'll say that. Um, and so I excused myself from the call for a second and I put myself on mute and I said to my son, um, that felt really rude to me. What you just said. And his response was, what do you mean it was rude? I was just asking what you were yapping about. And that kind of made me smile because he and I are in gen different generations and words mean different things in different generations. Just ask a 12 year old what a skibbity toilet is or what Riz means. And <laughs> so I said, well, so I thought about it and I thought like, what, what is it about that sentence that, that made me feel like it was rude and it was the word yapping. And so it's my job as a mom to instruct my child how to communicate with me, not to shut him down when he ups, when he steps on a landmine that he didn't know was there. And so I told him, you know, the, that word yapping, um, is, feels rude to me. And it's my, it would be my preference that you, if you want to know what I'm talking about, that you ask me, what am I talking about? Um, that feels less rude to me. And this is a concept I learned, um, basically called shark music. So when you're in, when you're at the beach and you're listening to beautiful classical music, um, and you're listening to the waves and your feet are on the sand, like my whole body is just super relaxed right now. Just thinking about this scenario. Now, if I was in that same place and I started here and my feet are in the sand and the waves are, are coming up on the shore and all of a sudden I start hearing dun -a, dun -a, dun -a, dun -a, dun -a. I have a different feeling in my body now. And that's the shark music. So When you're in a situation and you notice that your body gets activated, ask yourself, am I hearing shark music? So my client and I ended up discussing this last night because she was having a situation with her friend um, when her friend doesn't respond to her text messages something as simple as how are you and 
she asks her friend, how are you? And her friend says, I'm good, how are you? And she responds, and then her friend doesn't say anything. No thumbs up, no uh, glad to hear it. What, nothing, just no response. And that feels very rude to her. Um, and I, I can resonate, it, feels, it can feel rude to me too. And I know that I'm guilty of doing that sometimes. So I asked her, or I went, walked her through something called the Compass of Clear Communication, which is part of what I did with my son. And you state the facts of the situation, only the facts. The fact was is that sometimes, maybe all the time, probably more accurately sometimes, when I send a text, you don't respond to it. And I make that mean that I'm not important in your life or that I'm not important. And that makes me feel sad or angry. And in the future, my request is that when I send you a text, that at the very minimum, you do a thumbs up. So that last part was a little bit too much for my client and I totally get it. Cause when you are a people, people pleaser and you're work, you're a recovering people pleaser. It is really hard to speak your mind because we became people pleasers because we spoke our mind and it didn't please someone. And so we stopped speaking our mind. So what I invited her to do was the first three steps. What is the situation? What are the facts? What actually happened? I'll use my favorite example of somebody cutting you off in traffic. So what actually happened is somebody cut you off in traffic. And you made it mean that whatever you made it mean that pissed you off, right? That they were, um, that they don't care about you, that they're a jerk, that they're gonna kill someone, whatever you, whatever you made it mean that made you angry. Most people can resonate with road rage. So you're never gonna see that person again. Never ever, most likely. You're not gonna get, you're not gonna catch up to that person that cut you off that's going 90 miles an hour or 100 miles an hour. <laughs> um, so what else could be going on with them? Maybe they have to crap their pants. That's the funniest one to me. And if I'm laughing about something, I'm not angry anymore. So I use that example because with your friend, you're making it mean, or my client's making it mean, that her friend doesn't care about her and that she's not important to her friend. That's what she's making it mean, something along those lines. But what else could it mean? It could mean her friend got busy. It could mean that her friend's child was about to climb on the stove. It could mean that her mom called her friend and she forgot and she has mommy brain. I think we can all understand that. We've all been there. So, Another thing that my client could be making it mean is that no, I, no one is as good of a friend to me as I am to them. And so a good reframe for that is my friends are doing the best that they can with the tools and the resources they have at the moment. And when I'm ready, I'll help her by sharing some more resources. So I hope you found this helpful today. Uh, and I look forward to connecting with you in the future. Have a great day.